Hi, my name is Jenny Davis. I'm the founder and director of Arts Uplift um, Community Interest Company. We've been working in partnership with Museums Worcestershire on this project. My role in the project has been project manager and also the evaluator. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about um, highlights, I suppose, of the evaluation. You'll find the full report on the Arts Uplift and Museums Worcestershire website. But this is just an overview of perhaps of some of the um, tools that we used to evaluate and how we did it and some of the results. So it's really important when you do your evaluation to set your project aims and objectives at the beginning so that you can evaluate against it. And the aims that we set were to increase the well-being of people living with dementia and their carers to decrease the isolation of people living with dementia and their carers, to increase participants' engagement in music, to increase the participants' engagement and understanding of museums Worcestershire handling objects, and also to ensure that there's, in the future, a skilled workforce that can deliver music and reminiscent sessions in care homes in the community moving forward. So the methodology that we used for this evaluation is quite varied and quite vast because we had different settings in care homes and in the community. But all of the different um, staff members observed people's behaviour and the interactions. So there was observations by the care home staff, the musicians themselves, the museum staff and also myself as the evaluator. So each session we wrote down what we were seeing, what interactions were happening um, and what impact it had. Then for the community sessions, we did pre, mid and post project questionnaires. Um, and this was of varying different lengths, but also we tried to make sure that the questions were the same so that we could compare them quite easily as well. Um, we also, on each session, did a pre and post workshop happiness indicator. And what that was, was asking them how they felt before the session, how they felt after the session. We also interviewed different participants and staff members, so care home staff and also carers. And we did two more detailed case studies, um, looking at the impact of the project on two different couples that were they'd come to the um, community sessions. For the performances that we did in the dementia cafes, we also did post-performance questionnaires that people filled out. Um, we also, in the care homes, did a different form as it was filled out by the carer, the staff member. Um, and so it was really about a questionnaire about them observing the, the behaviour and the impact of the project on the residents. We also collected a huge amount of direct quotes, direct from the participants, the people living with dementia and the carers and staff members. Um, we, we have a lot of photographs that we took to document the project and we also had a great film made by Andrew Round um, to document the project also. We took quantitative and qualitative data to evaluate this project and um, I'm just going to read out some of the quantitative, the highlights quantitative data that we got from the project. So we had 431 individual people living with dementia and their carers participated in at least one session. Um, we also had 728 hands-on engagements that took place and what that means is that each person, how many times each person came and did the session. Um, for our fortnightly sessions, we had 24 people out of 68 came to at least half of the sessions. Um, people didn't always continue for various reasons. It was less about that they didn't enjoy the sessions. It was more people might have moved into a care home, circumstances changed, people unfortunately died throughout the project. Um, people perhaps weren't well on the day of the sessions so there was a lot of other reasons why people didn't come to all of them. Monthly sessions we had 10 people out of 35 came to at least half of the sessions 
we had a really good core group of people that came regularly. Again, similar reasons, um, less about they didn't enjoy the project, it was circumstantial, which is why they didn't always come to every session. In the care homes, we had 201 people out of 329 came to at least three out of five sessions. The um, participants was, were quite high in terms of retention in the care homes, partly because they were just there, it was their home, they were there anyway. Um, but it did, it was, we had to kind of educate the care home stuff sometimes to try and get the same people coming back so that we could evaluate it because didn't always, they didn't always understand that we needed the same people. Again, similar reasons why people didn't come all the time, ill health, they had visits to the hairdressers, they had visits from, you know, family members, lots of different reasons, but overall retention was, was high. We also had 281 people attend the performances of the songs. These were the numbers of people that came, were coming to the dementia cafes on any given day. Our volunteers did 217 hours um, for the project, which is great. And for our community sessions, um, I thought it'd be worth mentioning the split of numbers of people with dementia, numbers of carers. We had 33 people living with dementia attend our community sessions and 35 carers. We had a couple of carers that came on their own without um, a person living with dementia. Uh, for various reasons and we felt that they needed support as well so uh, we included them in the project. So our quantitative data also um, measured the well-being impact of the project um, and in, care, in the care homes when the average score was compared to when the participant was not engaged in the activity on 478 occasions out of 1,127 participants' well-being scores increased by 42%, which compared to other projects is actually very high in terms of people's well-being increasing. Um, we did the survey of the people in care homes by the care home staff, but then we also asked them to score um, the residents when they were not engaged in the project so we could compare and we found that um, there was a high increase of well-being in well of their well-being in the community sessions on 298 occasions out of 488 participants also their well-being scores increased by 61 percent so well-being increase was higher in the community sessions overall we also um, have some qualitative data to show you. This was all based around um, the New Economics Foundation Five Wells to Wellbeing. And we found that people really did connect to others. Um, in the care homes, it was less connecting with others, but perhaps more with the staff than the musicians and the museum staff and the carers. Um, but there on occasion they did connect with each other, but in the community sessions the connection between each other and the groups was immense. Um, and people, I think generally as it, as it was delivered over quite a long period of time, made, made really good friends um, and the, uh, most people were very sad when it, when it finished. So yeah, that's really strong. People were also active in, in the sessions, which is another well-being measure. Um, they participated in the songs, they participated and listened in the music, they looked at the handling objects and told stories that were, that were sparked from the, the handling objects. So very, very active in, in the sessions. They also took notice by watching and listening to others. Um, so they were, most of the time, were present in the, in the room um, because it was a group activity um, and people shared stories to the whole group. They were listening and watching people and watching the performances as well. So they were listening and taking notice to the musicians. 
le a lot of people learned something new about others and Worcestershire's history, which is another measure. Um, it was hard to measure that with people living with dementia, as we couldn't measure because of their memory um, disabilities, and they, we did we couldn't measure that very well. But we certainly knew from the carers um, that we spoke to that they did learn things, new things about themselves, about their partners, about the family members they came with, and about Worcestershire's history as a whole. And they also gave their time, which was another well-being measure, by sharing their stories um, and offering that to the group and to others. I also really a big believer in getting quotes from people. I think they're, that's probably, for me, the most powerful um, measure that you can get to evaluate your project. And I'm going to read some of these um, that I particularly thought were important. One activity coordinator from a care home said, it was great, really brilliant. B has come out of himself a bit more. He can be in low mood. The combination works well. Can we have it twice a year, every week if we could? They forget about their pains when they're doing the activity. And we heard this over and over again, how the people's moods were lifted through the project. Um, and actually that people just didn't complain about their aches and pains as much as they normally would, as they were engaged in it. Um, and then I guess their mind was taken away from their, their pain. So um, that was really, that was a really good outcome. Uh, one of our museum workers said, R had visitors for part of the session. When she came in, she said she was disappointed and she'd missed some of the session. Wish they hadn't come now, but what can you do? It was really, um, telling that somebody had wanted to come to our sessions more than they'd wanted to have family members come and visit them. So um, yeah, that was quite a powerful one too. When did the NHS staff at Redditch Hospital also contributed? She said, there was a difference in M's mood. He was agitated at the beginning and then at the end of the session smiling. P normally only converses with his daughter and wife, but when the singing started, he bellowed out the song. He remembered singing a few days later as well, which is an achievement. This is something we've heard quite a lot, is that people living with dementia are actually remembering the songs beyond the sessions as well, which is really, um, for some people, they haven't, they haven't heard people do that for a long time. Um, again, another example of when um, mood was lifted, um, but also showing how people wanted to share with the group when normally only talking to their family members. In this instance, they reached out to the ward and um, was singing to the whole, to the whole group. So connecting with others came out of that one. Again, one of our museum workers um, stated, Jay was in quite an emotional at times. The suitcase prompted some bad memories of childhood and she thanked me for listening privately to her and giving her a hug. One of the things is that some of the memories aren't always positive and good. We all have lives, you know, that li we live our lives up and down. Um, so it's one thing is just to be prepared for sometimes uh, participants can get quite tearful when they remember things or sad about uh, different instances in their life. So it's just making the staff aware of that and um, making sure that they are supportive and listening. One participant suggested also with the sessions help them to relax and be with others who experience similar issues. We heard, again, we heard this a lot, people saying that it was really great to talk with other carers that were going through a similar situation. Um, and they felt really supported by being able to do that. Another participant said, the glory of music and lyrics and how they unlock the doors of dementia was what they got out of it. Um, again, this, there's evidence where the music particularly can unlock memories that um, have been dormant for quite a long time and people can't um, reach those memories. So. Uh, that was, that was a really important part of, of the project. Music and socialising works far better than any medication, which I think sums up, for me, 
um, a very powerful uh, quote that sums the project up um, and suggesting that their experience was that the project was better than perhaps the drugs that their, um, the person they were looking after was on. I also wanted to talk about other outcomes that we discovered through the project um, and linking it back to our original project aims. In terms of our reducing um, measures around reducing isolation, a lot of the data was inconclusive, but the very fact that people were coming to the sessions out of their homes, out of their bedrooms, in, down into the lounge of the care home, would suggest that there would be an increase in a decrease in, ice, in people feeling isolated. It was also important for us that people engaged more with music and by participating we found everybody participated in the music in some way, whether that was just listening to it, not everybody could sing or did sing back. Um, so, but they were involved in the music, sometimes there was instruments people could play um, and we, by doing the sessions um, in, a, in a relaxed um, and supportive environment, we broke down the barriers um, that people, some people might feel by attending music sessions out in the community in a normal situation. We also um, increased people's engagement and understanding of the museum on handling objects. They probably in normal circumstance would have never had the opportunity to look at the handling objects um, and engage with them. And again, everybody engaged with them at some level, some fully, um, and how, holding the objects and sharing stories. And for some, it was just holding them and looking at them and not necessarily sharing, but everybody engaged in, at some level with the objects. It was also really important for us to do the training part of the project. And um, we definitely enhanced the artist skills that got involved in the training. They all spoke about how much they got out of it and how much they've been using it in the sessions and also um, beyond this project they've been using those skills so they've been taking it into their other work as well. We also um, did our training on mentoring with three students, uh, music students, and again they all talk about how much they got out of the project so we've raised those, those student skills. Um, and at least two out, two out of the three have talked about continuing to do music in the community. Um, so we've definitely increased those students' um, possibility in terms of their development into this field. Also was talked about a lot was the carers and family members saw the person living with dementia in a new light. That's not only just the carers or family members of the people in the community, but also the care staff quite often talked about having found out information about the people that are living in the home that they'd never known about, which um, helps them to become, see them and work with them and view them as more of a whole human being um, and getting to know them. So they had the time to get to know them better. So an important part of any project is the legacy and the long-term impact of a project because the funding things will always come to an end. But through this project, we now have nine new songs that were created from the memories um, gathered through the project, which are found, can be found on the Arts Uplift website, but also Museum's Worcestershire web website. We also have a short film that can be used and it's there forever. People can learn from it and you know, are able to go and do their own projects um, by learning from the film. The care homes, some of them have talked about collecting their own handling collection. So again, they can learn. One of, one of the important things was the care staff could learn some of the skills as they were, they, were, we were, they were part of the project and they could continue to carry on doing some of their own reminiscing beyond this project. Um, we've also got funding to do Suitcase Stories 3, so more workshops are being commissioned um, and they will be starting fairly soon. Uh, the learnings being shared, so again, through this symposium, through the film, through our que question and answer sessions, people will learn from this and then be able to take their the ideas and take them to their own settings and to be able to do their own work. So this will carry on beyond this project. 
and also the partnerships that um, have deepened between Arts Uplift and Museums Worcestershire, but also created new ones with different care homes um, and different care and support organisations. And already um, sessions are happening um, with those new care homes and partnerships. So this is just an overview and a few highlights from the evaluation report um, of the projects, but you can find the full report on the Arts Uplift website under Social Impact, and it will also be available on Museums Worcestershire's website as well.